how Steve Kaufman learns language. Now I've seen many videos of you and I know more or less what your strategy is. Um, I think you're a big fan of input, lots of reading and listening as you always say in your videos. Um, but how, you know, I, I can imagine that this is a very useful strategy if you're going to learn, let's say if you want to learn Dutch for example, because you already speak German and English. And I think you could just start by reading because you can recognize a lot of words or learning Ukrainian if you speak Russian. What if you had to learn, let's say, Indonesian tomorrow? How, how would you start? Okay. Uh, Indonesian would be easy because they use the Latin alphabet. Yeah. Or Roman alphabet or whatever it's called. Well, I, I, typically what I do is I go out and buy Teach Yourself mm -hmm. or Colloquial or Assimil. I see no great difference in those books. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, because there they have little... 30 second lessons, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And with each lesson, they introduce some simple concepts of the grammar. Yeah. And I like to go through that because it gives me a bit of an overview of how the language works. Mm -hmm. And that book is something that I'll go back to, either that book or some grammar resource, which I can find on online. I mean, you can find the best possible grammar books online. Mm -hmm. Dutch, I'm sure if I look for it, I can find Dutch, 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 English, Dutch, French, grammar, <laughs> the Dutch language. Uh, because you, you do have to go back there time and time again because the first time you go over that grammar it, it makes very little sense to you mm -hmm. because it's describing something that you have no experience mm -hmm. of and you know very well that if you're in a totally strange town and I give you instructions on how to find the train station you won't get there mm -hmm. whereas if you've already been there and you mm -hmm. know some of its landmarks and you got a bit of a sense of it then those instructions start to make sense exactly. We've all been there. The guy explains, and then he goes away. I, I, I've forgotten what he said. I, I have no idea mm -hmm. how I'm supposed to get there. So, so you don't focus too much on the grammar in the beginning. Um, so, so what do you do? You learn like key vocabulary, a few verbs, and when do you start speaking? I don't learn key vocabulary. Uh, the, the, the advantage, by the way, why I prefer, say, teach yourself to assimil, is teach yourself gives you the vocabulary for the lesson. Mm -hmm. Assimil forces you to read the whole thing in translation, which I don't like. Okay. Because as I progress, I have more, more and more of the words. I don't need the whole thing in translation. It's a distraction. Mm. I need the words that I'm missing. And that's the advantage of the online dictionary. Mm. Because there, like, and if I use Link, I mean, now I use Link. But before Link, I just go somewhere and use an online dictionary. And so I have small, digestible, relatively uninteresting content that I pick my way through. And it's fuzzy. And I acquire more words and so forth. And comes a point where I have listened to enough of this simple stuff and I have read enough of this simple stuff and I have acquired the most common words in the language. I don't need a list of the most common words in the language. They're going to show up in these lessons. There's no mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. So then as soon as is possible, which in the case of Indonesian, I think would be quite early. Yeah. In the case of Korean, it takes longer. In the case of Russian, it takes longer. Yeah. I've heard that Indonesian is not such a complicated language from a from a grammatical point of view. And so I would then start reading newspaper articles or whatever. And I don't know what resources are available for uh, Indonesian, but in the case of Romanian, for example, mm -hmm. uh, they uh, they had this um, Radio Romania, which mm -hmm. had articles on current events, on history and a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, very quickly, I was able to access those. Now, Romanian has 70% words similar to Italian yeah. so so it's but I'm gonna do Turkish one of these languages where I have absolutely no previous you know, exposure and and we'll see how it goes but the principle is get a little bit of an overview of the grammar then focus on simple beginner lessons for a month two three and then as soon as you can get into interesting authentic content and every so often go back to the to, to review the grammar just to kind of remind yourself a bit and then you forget it again but it all helps you to notice those grammatical patterns mm -hmm. you're listening and reading. And at, what, at which point would you start speaking? Do you do a lot of speaking practice? Do you take language classes? Or? Yeah, I mean, the, the point is, I like everything that I do in the language, uh, in, in my process of learning the language, to be meaningful. Mm -hmm. So I have to be at a stage where I can have a meaningful discussion with someone. Okay. Meaningful means I can understand what they're saying. Yeah. And that's the biggest nut to crack. Mm -hmm. And that I can start to express things beyond my name is, you know, it's a nice yeah. day. Yeah. Like, because so, that's very, to me, it's very painful and stressful uh, to have this very sort of limited 
discussions. And don't forget, if I spend 30 minutes or an hour and we use a very limited range of vocabulary mm -hmm. and I'm starting to express things and I don't have very many words and mm -hmm. I can't understand what the other person is saying. I don't think that's a very good use of my time. I would far rather spend that 30 minutes or hour doing more reading and listening, building up. Because to me, what matters is not how much you can say after two weeks or two months or three months. What matters is what the long term. six months later or a year later. I have a long-term perspective. I'm not interested in, in, in proving that in three weeks or three months I can do this. What matters more is I want to get to where I can understand movies, understand books, and have intelligent conversations in the language. That's always my goal. Okay, that's very interesting. So, you're basically, your first conversation in a language is already can already be an interesting conversation, or you can already talk about advanced topics, even though it's the first time you speak that language. Yeah. So, really? so well, struggle. I struggle. We always struggle. Yeah. And the lessons that I speak the best are the ones that I've spoken the most. Yeah. Like yeah. it's a point where you have to speak yes, a lot. But in the case of Russian, I must have waited two years before I spoke. Oh, in the case of Czech, it was less. It was six months. After that, uh, Polish and Ukrainian is, is, is sooner because, as you pointed out, they're related languages. In Romanian, I mean, after a month I could speak. I mean, Romanian, you want to go after an easy language, go after Romanian. <laughs> Not to speak it accurately, but there's so much vocabulary there. Yeah. Between the 70% uh, sort of Latin-based and the 20% Slavic-based, if you have both Romance languages and Slavic languages, R Romanian is a piece of cake.